it's been a very long time since I made my last end update video because I've been busy lately so I'm going to make an update of all of my ants there's a total of 10 ant colonies here so sit back and enjoy First, Momo, the Monomorium Floricola. Ever since I moved them into this formicarium, they were able to escape from the baby powder barrier. So, I use this. Vaseline. For such a small species, I must say that they are actually a big eater. Next is my Crematogaster. Basically, I can't see them most of the time, but whenever they are food, they will come. They are typically a Malaysian ant species, because wherever you see food, there you will see us. They are actually nesting with debris of leaves. They are covering the whole of their nest entrance with this sphagnum moss debris. Oh hey, look at that, that jumping spider. It has been missing for a very long time from my vivarium. So here it is. Beautiful, isn't it? Next is my Camponodus irritans. From my previous video, I moved them into this mini nest. You can actually check this video here for this product. But there's nothing much to update about them because they're kind of boring. What? Unlike their neighbor, the Black Pearl, Camponodus aurevitris, one of my favorite Camponodus species. They are feasting on this termite elate. They are way much more aggressive than Camponodus irritans. And since they have grown so big, I moved them into this BCA Camponodus pop and slot for the carrier. Here's the third type of Camponodus I have, Elbow Sparses, in this cylindrical vivarium. You can actually check the video here on how I created this vivarium. They often come out from their nest, and so there's nothing much to update about them. This is Polyrachis divas, the only successful Polyrachis that I have raised from a single queen. And I actually featured this Polyrachis in my How to Test Your Setup Innovated video. You can actually click here to watch the video. Mommy, no, don't leave me, no, mommy. 
Alright, cut the drama. This is called population control. In the diacama rugosum, the Nimrodian dinosaur ants, they have this population cap which is about 70 to 80 workers and so those excessive larvae, they will leave it in the outworld to die. Gruesome, right? But I love them hunting. Look at them. Wow. They are literally lioness hunting their prey. And I decided to give them a makeover of their nest, so I removed them. And behold, the plateau! I remove all unnecessary nesting spaces and leave only this flat area on top. They even produce drones. And look at those springtails. Wow, there's so many of them. But something disturbed me. Can you see it? Look at that. They are literally everywhere. Look at that worm feasting on that dead daikama ant. I have no idea what worms are these. But I hope that they are not harming my ants. Talking about worm infestation. Oh no! Look! Api is under attack by that super worm! No! Help! Help! No! Alright. The superworm is the one who is crying for help. Api has been growing very big lately. They love their honey, but not as much as their roach. They can kill a roach within 5 minutes and completely paralyzing it and consume it. Talking about api, this is ember, Fidole parva. They are literally mini Solenopsis geminata. I decided to move them out of this current soil setup because the soil has become dirty and I've used the drought method to move them out but they did not move and so I used a different method which is flooding it. This is Operation Noah. And guess what? It is a success! I moved them into this tube and cup setup and all of the other alleys have flew away. Finally, I'm going to feature my favorite ant colony and I'll let the video speak instead. Keeping these 10 different ant species could be difficult and time-consuming. 
but it reminds me of one thing. No matter they are small or big, with or without queen, active or passive, aggressive or even more aggressive, dry loving or humid loving, I love them all. I will try my best to provide for them whatever they need and make their nest as conducive as possible. People ask me, why would someone actually care so much for such insignificant creature? Now here's something to think of. If these insignificant ants are so valuable, aren't we human even much more valuable to our creator? As his creation, as his beloved child, wonderfully and fearfully made by no other but himself. If today I can see value in such insignificant creatures, there are greater value within you. You are valuable even when you feel no worth because precious is who you are. You are nice, you are beautiful, you are great, you are honorable, you are redeemed, you are smart, you are talented, you are worthy, you are loved. And I bless you with the love of my Abba Father.